All right, all right. Welcome back to Bitwick Studio, everyone. So I figured today I would share a thing that is very dear to my heart and that I use quite often. You know how we always have our own little hacks and things that we uh, kind of our go-to tools for uh, trying to achieve some awesome result. Uh, and it's a type of using the LFOs on the filter uh, in Bitwick that kind of work well together. Hmm, that doesn't tell you a lot, does it? So I'll just show you. This is a, a little uh, drum and bass, uh, simple, stupid rhythm that I did. So we have something to work with. That's fairly simple. But uh, we can hear a rhythm, right? We're one at 169 right now. So what I like to do, you could do this with pretty much even third party synths, but you know I love my poly synth for some inexplicable reason. We'll just add a note in here, because for this technique, uh, well, I I normally approach it with one note. Bandpass works well for this. So what we want to do is to bring rhythm into this very simple and straight and boring little patch. Normally, the way we do this is, of course, we put in little notes. And we kind of do this and this and rhythm, rhythmic or even melodic differences. You know, but that's fairly, uh, that's, that's not what we want to do. We want to really make it simple and create awesome rhythms that add on top of each other by just using a sing single bar thing. So how do we do this then? What I'd like to do is the following. I put an LFO on the filter with a band pass. And sometimes this requires a little tweaking. I've done this a gazillion times, but it's always good to do this new and to sync them to the rhythm. So this is just this one. And that's not so exciting, is it? That's like not super awesome. So then what I do, what I like to do is to go with the second LFO and create a 100% and 0% position of the filter by using a square wave. So if you put this on here, there will be an, an, there will be an extra jump. And if you go the same direction, and this is pretty much the hack that I want to share here, you go the same direction like your old LFO already was. So now you have the wave, the sine wave, moving this up unipolarly, if that's the word. Yep, because I turned the bipolar off. And you have your square wave going back and forth. Let's see how, uh, how that sounds. Well, that's already a little better, isn't it? It's already a little better than it was, but it's still kind of fairly, maybe a little too straight and a little too boring. You could, of course, try to like change the, sp change the speed of this thing. Or as we've done in the previous video, we could, of course, try to, to use a different timing. But what I really like to do is to keep those two straight, and then, and this will be the magic spice, put this thing on as well. This is a random step, so it will randomly uh, choose values and stay there for the duration that you set here. So if you put this on now, and I think I like to use this unipolarly only so that we don't extend our range. You have to really play with the ranges here so you don't land up in the very high high tens or something, 10Ks. 10K might still work, but you know, 10 to 20K is a really a little harsh. And down below here, there's the sub. So if we do this now, and we'll just tweak it, you see how that sounds. Especially if we pick up the speed a little bit here. And then we simply mm, change either our amounts here, which is how far the LFO is reaching, or you could just kind of dial back the amounts like this. And we see. If you're really crazy, 
crazy that would work, of course, but I like the 1 8. And then if you find a way to make your sound a little nicer and spice it up, um, it will be awesome. And a variation from this very simple straight bar here. We can add another LFO just to kind of go back and forth between our two sides a bit. And don't be afraid to put those on to other parameters as well. We could put it on the on the distortion section. And if you tweak those knobs a little bit, which I will spare you the time here, but uh, if you try this out yourself, you will see that there will be certain sweet spots where you have a lead that, even without any processing behind it, is awesome. <laughs> and then of course if you put it behind it, it's just sweet. And that's basically it. And you can use this technique with any, uh, I think even third-party plugins because for third-party plugins, you can just insert these here with this button and tweak parameters that are inside of the third-party plugin. And I'll probably do a video on that in the next days. But I just wanted to get this tip out because usually when I start with the track and I want some kind of lead, normally when I have my my path set and some some kind of background melody or chord progression or something. I always kind of go for this thing uh, because it's my hack and I've achieved awesome leads with it that are really simple. And of course, you could then go wild and either play with octaves. You can kind of do it like this, hold shift, and press the down arrow. See how that's on. And you, uh, do you already hear the melody that I'm hearing? That's not yet there. Let's build it. Okay. At the risk that this will be rather boring. Actually, this is not the way I wanted it. I use the doubling a lot up here. So, I'll just draw those out. what I want it. <laughs> it's all right though, I try to keep it short as well. Not forget that you guys are watching because I don't want to make you wait. Double all those. And then you would draw this out. You can also do that here. What a funny length. Oh, never mind. you get the idea. You can play with all the notes here and all the variation in here uh, kind of gets the rhythm into those notes. So here you are pretty much free to just paint it in color and see how that all fits together. I don't know why I want to go for B here. Um, 
and you just uh, kind of have control over your color, as I call it, over your melody and tonality with this, but all the rhythms come from here. And then, of course, if you're really crazy, you could also modulate this so you would have a macro, for example. And this is totally experimental. You could put a macro on the temples or the tempi, uh, whatever your plural is in English. See how, if this has even any future beyond uh, theory. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Not really. wonder if we can do this. You could uh, change the, the tempo sync in itself, which would bring us back to uh, one or two videos. Well, you get the idea. Uh, it was just about this filter section. Of course, you could do this with other things. So to recap, what you want to do is to select several LFOs and kind of have them move all in the same direction on the filter to kind of make the sound move more, even though by your notation and by your MIDI notes that you have, it shouldn't really move that much rhythmically. Well, I hope this helped you out a bit and you could pick up on some things. If you're still not Bitwake, you'll find the link in the description below. And I uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in five minutes in the next video. Bye-bye.